Hi guys, Richard here from Dabrail and today we're talking level crossings. Now, why is it whenever you're in a hurry to get anywhere, you always seem to get stopped at the level crossing barriers? And more to the point, why do they go down so long before the train arrives? Let's go find out. Oh, and while you're watching this video, see if you can identify the locations of all the level crossings and leave your answers in the comments section below. Don't forget to check our Facebook page to see how well you got on. Well unfortunately getting stopped at the barriers all the time can only be put down to bad luck but there is a perfectly good reason why they go down so soon before the train arrives. To find out why we need to look at the three main types of level crossings in the UK. So the first type of crossing we're looking at is what's known as an automatic crossing. Now automatic crossings work by small sensors on the track known as treadles. When the train passes over the treadle, it starts a sequence which lowers the barriers. Now, you'll notice on an automatic crossing such as this one here, there's only barriers on one side of the road, on the entrance side of the road. And the reason for this is to stop cars becoming trapped on the crossing. Because unlike some crossings, such as controlled crossings that we'll talk about a bit later on, there's no physical check made to check that the crossing's clear. Therefore, you're relying on motorists not stopping on the crossing or indeed swerving round it. Treadles are located in a position that allows between 15 and 30 seconds from the warning lights coming on to the train passing by. Whilst this is a very efficient level crossing, the fact that there are no physical checks of the crossing to make sure it's clear means it isn't the safest and is only suitable for more rural locations. The majority of level crossing accidents happen on automatic crossings and are normally the result of the crossing being misused. Okay, the second type of crossing is what's known as a user worked crossing and it's up to the user of the crossing to check that it's safe to cross. Mainly found on country footpaths and bridleways, user work crossings are the most common type of crossing in the UK. Occupational crossings are a type of user work crossing for vehicles and are often found linking farmers' fields together. Some footpath crossings may have red and green lights telling you when it's safe to cross. These are actually not user works but automatic miniature red and green crossings. And so we reach the third type of crossing, the controlled crossing. Now the controlled level crossing is by far the safest. As you can see we've got full width vehicle barriers there protecting the uh, crossing from road users. And what we've got on the controlled crossing is railway signals as well, meaning that the crossing has to be physically checked to make sure it's clear before the signals can be cleared to green and the train can proceed across it. But herein lies the problem. Controlled crossings are the safest type of crossing in use. Once lowered, they are physically checked to make sure the crossing is clear before railway signals are changed to green, meaning that if the crossing is obstructed, the signals remain at red and no trains can proceed. Crossings used to be closed and checked manually by level crossing keepers or by signal boxes situated next to the crossing. With the closure of local signal boxes, crossings are now often checked by using CCTV cameras. However, Network Rail have started to install obstacle detection systems on some crossings. These have become known as Tic Tac crossings because of their familiar shape. So if you've been stopped at a crossing and been waiting for ages, chances are you've been stopped at a controlled crossing. Now, to fully understand why the barriers go down so soon before the train arrives, we need to take a brief look at railway signalling in the UK. But if you want to see the full guide to railway signalling, then don't forget to like, subscribe and check out our other videos. It can take a fully loaded train several miles to stop, so therefore train drivers have to be warned of an approaching red signal so they can slow down and stop in time. Green signals tell the driver that the line ahead is clear and they may proceed at line speed. Two yellows, or a double yellow, tell the driver that the next signal is displaying one yellow. A double yellow signal is not always provided, depending on the line speed and location. One yellow tells the driver that the next signal is red, or danger, and they must be prepared to stop at it. As soon as a driver sees a single or a double yellow signal, they have to start to slow their train down, or they risk not being able to stop in time for the red signal and having what is known as a SPAD, that signal passed at danger. Now, as we said earlier, it can take several miles for a train to slow down and stop, and it also takes considerable time for them to accelerate again. The primary reason the barriers go down so soon before a train arrives is so that the signal at the crossing can be changed from red to green before the approaching train receives any yellow signals. 
This way the train doesn't have to slow down as slowing down and accelerating again causes delays. Often level crossings are situated at stations and the trains are stopping anyway. In this case the level crossing is closed as a safety precaution as although rare it is possible that the driver of the train may be unable to stop at the station or red signal due to slippery rails or other factors. The train could then potentially continue straight onto an open crossing and into the path of road traffic and pedestrians with catastrophic consequences. Well, okay guys, I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and maybe learned a thing or two. I want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful sons Joshua and Andy for helping me out on this and also a big thank you to Ammo Adventures and Gaming YouTube channel for helping me on this video. Okay guys, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments box below and I will try and get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more railway videos. Coming up in the next fortnight, we're going to be at the Spa Valley Railways Diesel Gala. And we've also got a video coming up about railway jargon and terminology. Once again guys, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe and remember, create, share and inspire. Thank you for watching.